Hey guys, so today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you uh, more about the Rainforest Exhibit and uh, this is our part two of it being set up for a, over a year and a half now and uh, it looks pretty good if you've seen it. So uh, I'm just going to uh, show you some clips and then I'll discuss a few things and uh, talk about uh, the animals and everything else that's inside right now. This is the Rainforest Exhibit when it first came from uh, Custom Aquariums. Uh, they built us a custom uh, amphibious aquarium, a huge one, about five feet by five feet by four feet deep. This is uh, when we first uh, tested the waterfall and uh, it worked out really well. I'm, I was pretty excited about it and it's been going strong. Uh, uh, both pumps, the stream and the waterfall pump, working really great. And we haven't had any issues with that. Our beautiful red-eyed tree frog, uh, the, the first uh, image here is uh, him as he first came from uh, frogdaddy.com. He was so cute and he was very scared, uh, but after a while now he's like, I, I touch him and everything, he doesn't jump or anything. He's really cool. He eats really well and he's doing really great. Uh, just like the uh, golden poison frogs that we got from Frog Daddy as well, but I'll show you that a little bit later. like bromeliad pups growing and what I'm decided to do is sometimes I drill holes like up here and I just put it uh, the, the, uh, the the pup extension from the mother to the pup I cut that off and stick it in the hole and then I uh, if it's um, sometimes I'll put silicone in it but if there's animals in here I don't want to do that so I just make it so it's tight enough just to go in there and then I wrap it around with some of the moss and then just make sure I water it and what happens is it gets, I mean, it's like, <laughs> like this one here, it's like on there, it's not going anywhere. Um, but also then I run out of space and I don't want to take up areas for other bromeliads or block the sun, or uh, the sun, block the light. So what I'll do is I'll take, uh, well, I just noticed actually, on this large fluker's vine and the small fluker's vine, I wrap it around and I make a space so that I can stick the end in, like a sh uh, this is wrapped in moss already, but... Well, as you see on this one here, I stick it in there so that uh, it's nice and uh, solid. And then I'll just put a little moss around it. And if I do have to move it, I can just pull it out. Uh, just pull it out of the, uh, the um, vine and plant it somewhere else. Or just leave it in there and let it grow. And, uh, so, um, and it's just a, an easy way to place uh, the bromelia pups um, if you're like running out of space on other areas. Or I could just put it in another vivarium, but I think I'm going to just put a couple on this vine here, and I think it looks pretty cool, actually. So, anyway, it's just an idea. All 
Paul Armas came from Tropica.com, and uh, they sent us, a, if you saw it on an earlier vlog, they sent us a box of, I don't know how many, about 150 uh, packets of moss, and that moss went crazy. Uh, the images that you're going to see here are of the frogs when they first arrived. Uh, we, I was a little bit taken back because it's been so long since I've seen poison frogs, but these were about the size of a dime. And there would be no way I could put them in the uh, rainforest exhibit since they would have easily got lost or something would have happened or I don't know, whatever. They were way too small. But after about, um, I think it was three, four four or five months, something like that. Uh, no, no longer than that. Um, about six months, then they were big enough to where I could put them inside and they've been fine. We haven't had any issues whatsoever. And uh, here are the images of, of when they came from us from frogdaddy.net. You can see how tiny they were. This one right here is about the size of a dime. Very tiny, very small. I mean, the fruit flies are almost as big as, as they are. But they were so cute. And they would eat and eat and eat and they grew real fast. But all that dark coloration, they have, some of them have some on their legs, but it's all, it's almost all gone. They're just so pure, uh, they're, these are the orange morphs. But I, I think they're more, the yellow's dominant, so I, I was thinking they would be more orange, but they're not, so don't matter me, I like them either way. That's one of those uh, sugar lids you can see how big they are compared to that lid. And now the images of uh, them as they are in the past week. They're about two and a half, almost three inches long. They're huge. And they eat a lot. There's one, now this guy's, he, he, this one is not too bad. He's, he, eats, he eats well, but there's one in there that, you can tell he's, he's my frog. <laughs> but he's really, really big. I was, I'm surprised. In fact, I, I cut back some of the feeding. I'm, I'm doing, uh, some people say do a day off, day on, day off, day on. Other people say once every three days. I, I feed them every day, uh, but off one or two of those days. So almost every day. Depending on the week, I come off a day or maybe twice in that week I won't feed them. So not in a row, but like feed, off, feed, off, and then feed, feed, feed. There's a waterfall and that wandering Jew right there, I don't know the scientific name for it, but it's the one in the water. That plant I got from a store and it was only about three, four inches in a little pot. It is the most dominant plant that uh, I ever put in there. It's unbelievable. We have the beautiful little poison frogs coming out of their little huts. They're so, they're so awesome. They're like little dogs, actually. Little personalities on them. I really love them. I'm really, I'm really glad I, I went for golden poison frogs. I was thinking of others and beautiful uh, colors and everything, but these are gorgeous. Here's our morning gecko, or one of the many we have in the rainforest exhibit. But that's one of the adults, and you can always see the silhouette from the light. I don't know how many morning geckos we have now. Uh, we started off with two. And I think we have two, three, four, we, we got about six, I think, of what I can see. So I know the, the, they're females and they're laying eggs, but I, I don't know how many they're laying. Oh, here's a, a, my orchid that is finally blooming in the rainforest exhibit. I'll put the scientific name here underneath. Um, this is the first time that, that the large one is flower, flowering. And uh, I was I'm pretty surprised. I heard people don't have much luck with orchids in these high humidity uh, vivariums, and I didn't. I wasn't having much luck as well. But now all of a sudden, it's just popped up there and it's starting to grow and bulb out. So we'll see. I'll I'll show you pictures once it starts blooming. Um, another thing that um, we talked about in the earlier uh, part one of this was about the uh, brochures that we just had made. 
by our, our, our good friend Jess, and I'll have more information below at, to our website. But we had, uh, well, just in case some of you do not know, we are offering our skills on creating vivariums and zoo quality exhibits to residential homes, um, businesses, even small zoos, uh, nature centers, or anything like that. And we have quite an experience back in the 90s, uh, in early 2000s that we did. We worked for not only uh, zoo uh, company theme, uh, theme construction companies, but I also would do it on the side. And we've done all kinds of stuff all over the USA. But we want to start doing it again. It's so much fun. We love the animals. We love designing cool things. And we just had our brochure uh, sent over from the printer. And uh, it's pretty cool, man. They did a really good job. And if you're interested in one of these, or you know somebody who would be interested in purchasing, we ask for serious inquiries only. We don't want to just send brochures out to just for souvenirs, although I don't mind a couple here and there. But uh, for serious inquiries only, we, we ask, and we'll sh uh, send you out a couple brochures. And if you want to discuss further about us building you something remarkable, uh, there, our contact info is on the back and uh, you can get a hold of us and we'll, uh, we'll take it from there.